G'day, this is Julian Siri Good, and you're watching Local Knowledge. All of us have to deal with putting pictures on our websites. Everything from simple things like a logo, which is a picture or an image, down to other things like, you know, this image here, and let me pick another one here from a client example. Here's a, a client website that we've worked on for a, a surf resort down in El Salvador, right? And we have a whole website header, this area up here, which shows some great imagery of their resort and things around their resort to give you a sense of what it's actually like to stay there, right? So we have a need to get website or pictures up on our website from everything on uh, static images like these to maybe a blog, right? So you might have, um, let me just go ahead and click on this one here because we have a, a website blog on this particular case. And um, in order to get these photos up on our website, we need to edit them so that they're the right size. And there's two things that we talk about when we talk about uh, photo sizes on a website. First of all, there's the physical dimensions, right? That's how big it is. Just like if we think of a, a photo um, in the material world, we would have a 5 by 7 or an 8 by 10 photo. Well, we have uh, dimensions on websites as well for photos, but we measure them in pixel sizes, not inches. So as a rough uh, scale, just to give you some way to, to relate to it, 100 pixels on a website is about the same as an inch. This particular image that we look at, we're looking at is about nine inches wide or about 900 pixels by about 400 pixels high. All right, And when you have a blog post, you're probably going to have an optimum image size in terms of the dimensions. This one happens to be around 450 pixels wide and uh, probably about 300 pixels high. So you need to get your images to be about the right size so that they look right on your website and also so they're not too big from a file size perspective. This lesson is going to show you how to do that. And we're going to use nothing but free tools that are available to anybody with a web browser and an internet connection. So. We're going to be working on how do I get an image that's the size of this website header uh, put up without making it too big so that our website loads slowly. We don't want it to weigh a lot in terms of file weight. That's a geeky kind of term that we use in website development. It just says how big is the actual file size that needs to be downloaded onto the computer's browser every time they view your website. Obviously, the smaller the file size or weight, um, the faster your website will load, and this is really critical. All right, uh, the average uh, you know IT department uh, of a website of a big website will will go over excruciating detail to make sure that their photos not only are the right size, but they're also the file same or the right file file size in terms of weight, so that the site loads quickly. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to show you this tool called Picnic. That's p i c n i k dot com. You can get a free uh, tool there, a free account where you can log in and do all the photo editing that you'll need without having to get into expensive software that's complicated to use like Adobe Photoshop which costs, costs hundreds of dollars to buy and unless you're you know, working with photos extensively, a web developer or some other kind of um, photo expert, you just don't need this kind of firepower. So we're going to start this process by uploading a photo. Now these are, these are photos that are taken probably with your digital camera and they're uploaded to your computer. So once you've done that, they're on your hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and upload one. And um, here we go. Picnic has now uh, uploaded my photo. It's a particular uh, photo of the surf bar that they have at uh, Paradise Blue in this particular uh, resort that is down in El Salvador. Now. If I go and help, uh, look at some of these controls, I can do things like auto fix, I can rotate the photo, I can change the exposure. Um, you're probably familiar with this type of exposure control and, and photo control. We're primarily concerned with a couple things which are cropping, resizing, all right? And then later on, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the file weight, how much the file actually weighs in terms of uh, how quickly it will display on the website. And again, I'm gonna try to emphasize that when I'm talking about file size, there are dimensions. All right, so I'm gonna click on resize. We're now talking about file dimensions, so relate that to an eight by 10 photograph. That's how the dimensions are. And um, right now, this, this photo in its current state is about 2,500 pixels wide by about 2,000 pixels high. We need it to be about 920 pixels wide, substantially smaller. And we want it to be about 400 pixels high. So clearly, 
if I was to keep the proportions of this photo the same, if I was to make this second measurement 400, you'll notice that it will automatically downsize my width because it's trying to keep my photo in the same proportion. Now I don't want that because now my photo is not going to be wide enough for what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to 920 pixels wide. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some photo cropping, all right? Because the other alternative, which is to not keep proportions, is going to end up scrunching my photo down. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So now I've got the right the, the right dimensions to my photo, but unfortunately, I can see that my photo looks squished. Now, some of this is okay, but if you do it too much, as is this as in this case, it just looks bad. And we don't want that. We want your photos to look good. So, we're going to go back to keeping our proportions and we're going to go back to it being 920 pixels wide and I'm going to say OK. So I now have my width right. The next trick is to crop our photo down. So I'm going to click on crop. Now I've already like I said got my photo width the way I want it so I don't actually want to crop any of my width out of this particular photo. I want that to be the same. What I am looking to do is to get the height down and if I just pointed this this little area right here I want to get that that to get down to about 400. So there we are. We are at 920 by 400 and obviously we are getting rid of some of the image. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna potentially crop out the top of this palm tree area if I go down here. Maybe I want to go down further and, and, and take off the top of this bottle, this big blow up bottle. I might just want to look at the umbrellas, the people and this happy smiling faces, the beach in the background. Um, this looks pretty good because I'm kind of seeing the people which is the main focus, but I can still see things that are going on in the background. Um, that entice me around this photo. So I like that cropping. I've got the right physical dimensions of the photo and now I'm going to click on OK. So now we have a photo that's the right size. The only thing we're left to do is to get the right file weight. All right, So that's the other kind of file size. No longer the dimensions but how many kilobytes this particular photo is. Now um, I can rename the photo and that's actually a good thing to do. Why don't we actually call it something that has to do with the photo. Alright, so this is Caillou Surf Bar at Paradise Blue in El Salvador. I've got my dimensions in here. I have the option of saving either as a JPEG, a PNG, or a GIF. Most web photos either use a JPEG or a PNG. Both of them work. JPEG is still kind of the standard, so I would stay with JPEG. Now, notice that the file size right now is 280 kilobytes. That's big. To give you an example, a lot of home pages for an entire website would only be that big. Some are even smaller. So having one photo take up all that space is completely unacceptable. It will take way too long for that website page to load. All right. So notice there's a setting here for JPEG compression um, quality. And right now it's at 10, which is the best quality, huge file size. We don't want that. If we go down. I'm going to move this down to, let's say, a 9. Now, we've reduced it, but it's still big. So great quality, big file size. Let's keep going. Now, this one says it's, it's a sweet spot of really good quality and file size. It's still about 144K. Now, I'll just mention, uh, if we keep going down, we're going to get what we want in terms of file size. But each time you go down in quality, the photo gets a tiny bit grainier. And you're, what we're really doing is removing some of the color from the photo. Now, a lot of this you can't even see. You know, you would have a hard time telling between the two. But when you go really far um, and get down, you can really make uh, notice the difference. So have a look and see what you've got, you know, in terms of what the actual final photo looks like. I feel comfortable with a photo that's about 85K. That's still pretty big, but I really don't want to go further than that in terms of the impact it's going to have on the actual image quality. So I'm ready to save my photo. And you'll notice that it, it pops up this dialog box and I now have the ability to save this on my desktop on my computer, which I'll do. So it's saving and now I'm done. I'm ready to go onto my website and actually get this photo located in my website header or whatever else I was going to do with it. If it was for a blog post, I would do that. Hope this lesson helps you in terms of dealing with file size dimensions as, file, as well as file size weight so that your website loads quickly and your photos look great. This is Julian Siri Good with Local Knowledge. Thanks very much for watching today.